Oh, hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for visiting once again. And uh, so um, we've returned to the modelling desk today. Um, for those of you who watched my um, my video from yesterday, um, and um, today we're going to look at further um, masking and painting of um, roundels and so on on the Katare 132 Spitfire, which is uh, shaping up rather nicely. So just to bring you up to date with what's been done so far. You can see one or two things they're fairly obvious obvious uh, you know uh, obviously but um, I masked the um, the blue part of the roundel here uh, and um, I've painted that and uh, I followed the instructions here which are fairly clear which is to use lots of thin coats and that seems to have come out nice and evenly um, and I've got these roundels um, placed um, as accurately as I possibly can. And hopefully, when I draw this mask off, it'll look um, it'll look quite good, uh, and they'll be evenly placed. Um, it will be obvious if they're not. But the other thing I've done, and I'm going to zero in and show you this. I've painted, I've overpainted the um, the masks here, so the the walkway forward marker here and the um, undercarriage down indicator here. This little tweaker here, which is the undercarriage down indicator that sticks up when the undercarriage is down, uh, I will paint a dull red colour because that's what they're supposed to be all, by all accounts. And I've masked and painted the walkway demarcation line on this side. Some Spitfires had a vertical demarcation line here and some did not. I will put one in. Um, and I think it looks better if you do. And as you can see here, you can see the uh, walkway inboard marker there. Um, I forgot to, um, when I put this mask on here, this area here, that actually there's gonna be a roundel on there to start with, and then you put that mask in over the top of that. So I've had to take that off. Um, in terms of the other masks, uh, masks that I've painted, you can just about see that. Here's the um, M marker. And if we go to the other side, you can see, you'll just about be able to make out the, it's it's much darker because I've painted it black, the, the WT marker and the M marker there. You can see, just about see those that through the gloss. But what I found with these, these particular things is that actually there's no height to them at all because it's painted, of course. Um, and I think they look a lot better than decals, which is, I think, what we're going for, really, I would say. So um, I'm quite pleased with the result of that. Um, and uh, so I do recommend these um, one-man army masking sets. So what I'm going to do here today is just have a look at the fin flashes, um, put the fin flashes on either side of this um, and show you how that works. And I'm going to put the outer round... Um, roundel marking in to mask off so I can put the red down as well so then we have a uh, a blue and red roundel there but let's do the fin flashes first shall we so I need to find the fin flashes so there are several types of fin flash for Spitfire Mark 1s depending upon when they were cooked as it were and the ones we're going to use this time uh, are these ones here so there was no cutaway on the fin flash on the variant I'm using, which is actually C in the Kotare instructions. Um, so that's the 610 Squadron uh, DWK. Um, so I'm going to put them down. Now the way this works is there's a, a blank oblong panel here, which you place onto the tail fin. You then mask around it and then draw that off and then you can mask individual one, two, three, so red, white and blue. Red is always at the front, um, so you have to get them the right way around. So what we'll do is we'll place those and um, we'll, we'll have at that, but I'm going to refer to the um, instructions here to make certain that I get this, to get this correct. Um, so you can see here um, where the, the sighting of the of, of the um, of the mask um, and it looks to me to be just slightly above one of the let's just zero in and show you this actually it's probably good to the the sighting of the fin flash is just slightly above one of the tail ribs on the rudder here so we just have to get that slightly above there and then we should be able to get that, that fin flash in. It looks like it's reasonably flush to the tail 
the uh, horizontal tail plane as well so that should be um, good and obviously it says here um, note direction so obviously red white and blue so we have to get that right so let's um, zero back out again minus 0 0.7 there we go something like that that'll do it um, and um, we can then um, we can then crack on so where's my my thin flash here so get myself a little blade and just draw that away there and take that out I'm just going to put that on my hand for a minute just to remove some of the stick from it obviously I've gloss coated the the paint so it's it's quite tough so what we'll do then is we'll look to place that as best we can and then get it absolutely right as Ah, see, I've unstuck that. There we go. Let's try again, shall we? Oh, not quite so dexterous today, for some reason. Not quite sure why that is. There we go. So let's gently push that down there. And I'll zero in and have a quick look and see if we've got that. Um, there we go. That looks that looks about right. Let's just I'm going to have a look at this off camera a minute, just so that I can just make sure I'm happy with the the sighting of that flash. Give me one second whilst I have a a quick glance. Yeah, that looks about right. I'd say. Um, and uh, so what we can do is just push that down and then we'll go to the other side and we'll do the same thing so we've got both the flashes masked up hopefully properly so same thing again I'm going to now we haven't got spares of these so it's um, a good idea to get this right the first time but I mean, most of you guys will be pretty good at this kind of thing I would have thought it's not going to be an issue you know, I knocked the camera there to make sure I get this sighted correctly it's just slightly down from there about right as well so I'll have a quick look at that through the magnifier and it just needs to be moved slightly that way at the bottom it's just lift that there and then just put that down again have a quick look I'd say that's about right Yes, there we go. So, what we then do, I'll stick those down. So it only needs to be stuck temporarily, really. And um, obviously, remember, you've got the, the rudder offset, although it's on a tab. Try not to press too hard up the top here. So, what we then need to do is just mask around these flashes hopefully oh here we are look we can see whether we've got this right up at the top here let's see if I can just add some light onto that to make it easier for you guys to see here's my little lighting whatnot Johnson here yes you see so I think we're about right there so as you can see when we look right up in here it looks like those two corners are just about in the right place 
I'd say they probably were by the look of it. So we're about we're about right. That's good. So let's go back out again. So I'll do one of these um, uh, bits of masking on the fin flashes, um, and um, we'll um, then we'll go on to the the roundels as well. So what I'll do there is just cut that, so I can have nice sharp edges. And I'll mask the top here. Now oh, I've switched my little light off there. There we go, it's back on again. more accurately than that. There we go, that's that one. So we'll take a, another strip of tape here. A corner and then mask into here. that one. Now I need another strip of tape here. I'll just have that away. We don't want that crinkly edge there. So we'll do the other vertical section. And uh, surface is compounded here because it's curved in two directions so we have to be quite careful making certain we get that mask in properly there we'll just carefully press that in in that section there go and we'll just use a thin strip of tape for the uh, that other little section there at the bottom and then we can mask all around it after that and I'll do that off camera because I'm sure you probably don't want to see me messing around with great long reams of uh, of masking tape so I'm going to try this is going to be a bit more difficult because we have to get a bit of a fold into this but we'll we'll crack on anyway and see if we can do it no oh, well, I pulled that too hard she cried try and do is butt that up to that surface there and should be okay there with that 
kind of have to be careful there now I'm going to have to be careful masking this uh, sorry painting this because I don't think that mask meets up to that surface very well I'm going to have to look at that off camera because that's a bit that isn't particularly good I don't think to be honest with you I think that's that needs well, I'll do it now it's better to do it properly the first time I wonder if we can put a bit of a fold in now that might make it somewhat easier eh? Ah, look at that, there we are, look. There we go, oh, not quite, not quite. Job done, there we are. So, that's the masking round there. Um, what we'll do off camera is I'll, um, I'll mask around the other areas so we don't get overspray. I'll do the other side. Um, and then we'll end up with this sort of thing that looks like a flag there um, with, of masking tape and uh, we'll be we'll be there with that so that's fin flashes once you've removed the fin flash then you can start to paint the, the colors one after the other uh, blue and white and red I suspect probably the best thing to do is to paint the white first and then mask the and then and then mask the blue I'm, I'm gonna have to think about that what what would be the best way of going because I suspect you would want to paint the, the lightest colour first. That would that would strike me as logical. But look, tell me in the comments. Um, you guys are all much more experienced at this sort of thing than I am. So always willing to hear um, constructive comments and remarks from anybody. So that's the first thing. That's that sorted. The next thing will be these roundels. Now, I would say before I carry on with this that the way I'm going to do this isn't really the right way. So of course, as you'll know, what you would do to begin with, and what I've done here, is to have taken this mask here and put that and laid that down. But I haven't used the roundels here, because you're supposed to use transfer tape. Uh, so in other words, you put a piece of tape over the top of this, um, up to the sort of just the edge of this, and then you sight the roundel um, mask, the outer mask like this, and then draw the transfer tape off. This was. This made things rather difficult, in fact, almost impossible to me anyway, to actually sight the roundel evenly in both on both sides. So let me give you an example of this. I'm going to zero right in on this so that you can see. Um, this line here, this, this um, panel line, let me show you the panel line before, rather than just gesticulating generally at it is what I used as my guide on both sides for the um, uh, for, for the pretty much for the sighting of the uh, of the of the roundel I reasoned that if this um, cord here was even on both sides then I pretty much have the roundel in the right place so if we look to this side you can see that it and, and we're in at 3.2 times magnification here um, you can see it more or less is the same. Um, I think that the the distance at the front is equidistant as well, um, but it looks more or less exactly the same. So from from arm's length distance, it looks like it ought to be okay. I'm I'm I do hope that it is. I'm pretty sure that where my um, end of the masks here are sighted on both sides are the same. So I should be pretty much there. So transfer tape is a good idea if you can use it. I found I kind of wasn't able to, which made things rather difficult. So what I'm going to do instead here is I'm going to take this round section off here to mask up to only leave the red section in the middle so that we can um, we can crack on and, and, and then paint. Um, so I'm going to use the same drill as I've used before, as you will have seen. I'm going to carefully draw this off like that. and just put it onto my hand for a minute very gently and we have to be very careful with this because if we stretch the mask then it's you know then uh, 
it's not it's not the best but this is not then quite so sticky so what I'm then going to do is attempt to sight the the mask onto the roundel here and I'm gonna I'm gonna start where I haven't got a shadow that's difficult actually I'm gonna start here and just try and sight that in where I can it's actually rather difficult to see to be honest with you because this is um, as you can see it's blue and it's and it casts a shadow so it's it's bloody tough to see to be honest with you see that's not quite in the right place is it so I'm going to have to concentrate a bit on this. Let's zero out a little bit so that you can at least see some of this. This is probably quite important to look at. about right. Let's get the old magnifying glass out in a minute. It's not quite there. And I'm going to have to try and get this as, as perfect as I can because um, clearly if I don't then it's going to be, it's going to, it, even the smallest of um, inaccuracy here is going to is going to show up not the best idea I've, I've slightly stretched this now not a lot but slightly I'm going to try again there we go let's give that another go See, that's not quite there either. And my other option, whilst I'm thinking about this, is to take the masking tape off where I've got the background there and perhaps try that. Let's do that. So. I think it would take me a long time to do that, um, the, the method that I've just selected there. So what I'm going to do is take my masks off here so that I can see the edges of the, of the square mask here and then sight up to there. This may prove to be a better method, but there we are. We're learning as we go, and that's important. So what we want is 1B. So 1B gives us that small roundel there. So we'll take that one. hand 
around for a minute. And then see if we can sight it onto the top of this. actually easier because we have got corners to be able to look out there. This does make things much simpler it would appear. Well there you go. I think that's clearly the way to go forward, isn't it? So we can put our magnifying glass away for a minute. I'll put it back in this little packet later on. And we'll just take these paint masks off that I put on. Put that away over there, out of the way. And I can go for 1B again. There's another 1B there, so just draw that one off. And then use that neutral corner there, the 1B corner. There we go. So Oh, look at that, I got that the wrong way around, didn't I? That's all right, I think I can still use this in this way. So what we'll do is we'll go into that corner again. Sight right into the corner. They look pretty good, I'd say. So we know which way's the easier way now, don't we? That's absolutely um, without question. So now we can paint those red roundels in the next time we have red paint available. Now, um, 28 minutes 12. We're, we're still, you know, looking in, in, in good order, actually, to be able to, uh, um, you know, have a 30 minute video. Um, I'm inclined to just, well, I'll give you a quick briefing of the, of the next things I'm going to do. A couple of things. I want to put the roundel on here to start with, and then the DW and the K markings afterwards, um, and then once that's done, paint them in, uh, and so on. Um, the roundel for the um, this particular variant sits up towards the top of the spine panel here. So what I'm going to do is to use a piece of marking tape to just locate a line that's central to here and then place the roundel and then make certain I get the same on both sides. Um, so we have to be yeah, reasonably careful with that. I think that's going to be somewhat challenging. But the other thing I'm going to have to do here is to um, remove this access door because the DWK marking or the DW marking here that goes on the port side, you probably see that. I don't know whether I can show you that in close. Ah, here we go, look. So you see that the D is cut away because clearly the access door that you can see there had a bit of the D on the back of it. Now, I think that it would be difficult to mask in, or to put this mask in, because it's a big square block, of course, um, with that access panel door there. So I'm going to have to remove that um, and curse myself for a fool 
for not having thought about this to start with. Um, but there you go. These things happen and we do the best we can with the tools we've got. Uh, and that's the uh, that's the next the next trick as it were so moving forwards these are the things to do next um, and um, I've got some things to complete off camera so the next time we meet hopefully in not too far distance time in future we'll be um, able to show some some other new things uh, and some roundels painted and so on this thing looking a little bit um, better marked just to remind you of course that on the underside because it's been painted the sky type s and this was over painted at omus which is operational maintenance units and on the squadrons all of the stencil markings here and there were m markers dotted across here and then trestle uh, markers here and so on were painted over so i don't need to put them on at all so uh, there we are so um this is the lazy variant that you don't have to put lots of markers on so let me leave that with you now say thanks very much indeed for your time thank you very much to all the new subscribers and to the old ones alike your comments and um and input is always extremely valuable and thanks very much indeed for for giving them hope you continue to do so always delighted to hear from you um and um yeah thanks very much once again and i'll look forward to seeing you on the next one cheers for now Bye bye